As the mobile web becomes more important and as more people visit your website, which I'm sure you have, on a mobile device, uh, understanding how your website performs and works on mobile is really important. Now obviously you can do that by just visiting your site on your mobile phone. Um, and there are tools in Chrome that allow you to look at what the site looks like on mobile devices and there are bandwidth throttling tools that you can use. But one of my favorite tools that I'm going to demo right here is something called Google PageSpeed Insights. So let's, uh, let's Google that, find the tool. Um, so this is a website that you can visit. And it allows you to enter a page URL right here, and then it will run a series of uh, tests on that page and, and give you information about how effective that page is on mobile. So since I've been picking on the department website, I'm going to keep doing that. Uh, we're going to look at www.csc.buffalo.edu. We're going to click Analyze. Uh, what it's doing is it's, um, it's downloading the site. It's looking at different performance characteristics. It has some way to look at how it's laid out. Uh, which is also pretty interesting. Okay, so here are scores. Uh, not very good. Um, so the first score that comes up is the mobile score. There's both a mobile and desktop score. Let me move the side of the server so you can... Oh, oh, it responded. Ah, okay, hold on. This is a mobile responsive website, so I want to see. So it clearly knows, it, it, it can give you actually even a little snapshot of what the page looks like. So let's start with the, uh, with the usability issues. User experience, this page may not pass Google's mobile friendly test. Well, right, of course it doesn't. This page, there is no mobile site. It's the desktop site. It's just shrunk down. And so some of the uh, problems are pretty obvious. You should use legible font sizes. If I take a big page that was designed for a desktop browser and shrink it, I can't read it. Kind of obvious. Size tab targets appropriately. I would never, I have a big fat finger. I'm never going to be able to click on one of these links. Um, same thing like this. So there's some issues here. Um, now if we go up here, uh, we'll look at the performance issues. And performance is particularly important on mobile. And there are some basic changes that you can make to improve the performance of your site. If someone goes to your website and it doesn't load for a couple seconds, that person is probably going to go to a different website. So here are some issues. Now, if you run this on your site, depending on how it's hosted, you may or may not be able to fix some of these problems. So browser caching um, is something that you may or may not be able to fix, uh, depending on uh, you know, how, much, uh, how much visibility you have. And what's the problem here? What this means is that the server hasn't told the browser that it can cache some of these resources. And some of these resources are, not, are things that I should be able to cache. So every time I load the page, I shouldn't need to download these CSS files. They probably don't change very often. And so instead of forcing the browser to download them every time, I should tell the browser that it's okay to cache them, meaning keep a copy locally and then don't re-download them if they haven't changed. All right, so I've got some browser caching issues. Uh, let me, oop, sorry, this takes me to a help page. Uh, let me try to kind of, so there's a lot of browser caching issues. Pretty much every resource on this page is not properly configured for caching. Uh, hit hide details. Okay, uh, minify the CSS. So this is something that if you maintain a website, even if you don't control the web server, you can fix this. So CSS and JavaScript, which also is not minified, these files can be quite large, but there are very basic ways to shrink them down. So if I remove all a lot of the white space from these files and reformat them, I can actually frequently reduce their size pretty considerably. The files are processed in the same way. They're no longer human readable, but that's not important. Uh, same thing with the HTML. So none of the, you know, the resources here, um, and the reason why we're checking for this is because the more content I send to a mobile device, particularly on a slow connection, the slower that device is going to be to render my page. Um, there are some also some information about um, desktop optimizations that I can perform. Um, and there are, there are some suggestions as well. So this is one of these cases where compression is not enabled on the web server. So particularly for both mobile and desktop sites, it's much more efficient now given how fast processors are to compress the page on the server, send a compressed version like with gzip, and then let the client uncompress it. And there are ways to do this seamlessly, um, and this website doesn't have them enabled. So you can see here that if I compressed some of the resources on the page, I could actually shrink them down quite a bit. There are also rules about um, and suggestions about how the page is rendered. 
So, um, and, and this would require more explanation than I have time for right now, but in certain cases by rewriting and reordering elements on the page, I can allow the browser to start to parse and draw and lay out the page faster. And so this is a, this is a example of this. And some of these things are, again, even if you don't control the web server, so if your site's hosted on GitHub pages or something like that, you can still fix some of these problems by changing um, the code for your website um, in certain ways.